Okay, class, so we're going to be starting day seven of studying biography. And our objective today is we're going to infer a subject's personality traits and motivations from the facts and details the biographer includes about the subject's life. So what that means is that we can infer, what does it mean to infer? What does inference sort of mean to you? Marcos? I believe, like if someone says I'm scared of something, I'm, I believe it means like inferring means I believe, like I infer that you are the self conscious of things. Okay, so you believe something. What else is required to infer? So it's not just belief in something. But what else do you need in order to really infer? Wesley? Faith. Okay, so you have faith or belief, yeah. So that is important, but what else does it require to infer something, Brenton? Okay, so you are guessing, sure. You're not 100% certain, but what does it require? Inferring requires more than just guessing or believing in something. What else do you have to have to infer? Something to back up your claim? Evidence? Some sort of detail that can show that? So will that detail scream exactly what you want it to say? No. To infer means I'm coming to this conclusion because of this piece of evidence, all right? So like, for example, Marco said a suspect. So if you're inferring that somebody is a suspect, you're a detective or something like that, you're inferring that somebody is the suspect or the primary suspect, it doesn't mean that the evidence screams they did it. It's not like they read the book and it just says, so-and-so did it, the end. That's not inferring. That's just logic, right? You just read that and say, okay, it's there. But if it says somebody did this, and then this happened in this room, and then you start to say, I infer it was this person because I know that they were in this room at this time, and so that makes them the suspect. So inferring, yes, it's a guess. Yes, it's a belief, but you have some sort of evidence to back up your belief. Okay, so it's more than just a blind guess. Got to have evidence too. So when we're inferring about a subject's personality traits or motivations, we're using facts and details, and those facts and details may not necessarily say, oh, this person's a hard worker. No, you'll say, I believe they're a hard worker because of this, this, and this. The book's not just going to come out, well, some books, some biographers will say they were a hard worker, they were a kind person. Other books are just going to tell you what they did, and then you infer whether you think they were a kind person or a hard worker. Okay? So that's the difference here. So that's our objective. So personality traits. Biographers often describe the personality traits of the subject or person they are writing about. Here are a few examples of personality traits. So we have persistent, perceptive, diligent. Uh, affectionate, agreeable, ambitious, okay, dynamic, easygoing. Those are all examples of character traits. You yourself have character traits, okay? Everybody here is a little different. We all have some character traits in common, but we also have some stuff that's not common. Maybe some of us are patient and others are impatient. Maybe some of us are organized and some of us are unorganized. So we've got these kind of personality traits that go with us. So we're going to read a couple pages from the book Esquivel by Susan Wood. And as I read, think about what personality traits Juan Garcia has. So I'll do my best to try to read this. It's a little buggy. So by age six, Juan was curious about music. There was a piano at Juan's house, but it was a player piano. A paper roll told it which keys to play. Clever Juan had an idea. He disabled the paper roll 
and turned his parents' jangly piano into one he could practice on. He played it day and night. By age 10, Jason was captivated by music. He loved to play piano anytime, anywhere. Sometimes he'd disappear from home in search of an audience, and his family would have to go looking for him. They always found him in front of a piano. Okay. So our subject is Juan Garcia. This is the title of the book. What is the subject like? Who is this person like? And then how does the biographer show this? So here we're thinking of character traits, okay, describing who this person is, and then we're backing up our character traits with evidence here. So, who would like to describe a character trait of Juan Garcia? Kylie? Okay, enjoys piano. <coughs> okay, what else? Gretchen? All right, so it seems like he can stick to something and won't stop. Good, so now we're inferring because the biographer didn't write that in the story. We're inferring about his character traits now. So what kind of character trait do you think that would be to stick to something and not stop? What do you think? Do you want to help him out, Daniel? Patience. So being patient maybe. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I misspelled that, but we're going to go with it for right now. I think I might have missed the I-N-G there. Okay, so what else? Patience. Maybe, what's another word that maybe describes sticking to something? and not quitting. Lila? Yeah, perseverance. That doesn't look good either. Okay, anyway. So perseverance. So that is pushing through something challenging, not quitting. So that really fits with what Gretchen was saying. Anything else to describe Juan Garcia? What else? Anything else you can use to describe him? So he enjoys piano, he's patient, he's got perseverance. Anything else, Lila? Okay, determined. Determined. Was that kind of the same thing you were going to go with, Gretchen? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and stop here. So how does the biographer show these things, these attributes here? So how does he show that he enjoys piano, that he's patient, he has perseverance, he's determined? How do we know that? What's being told in the story? Emmett? Um, Let's get that iPad closed and follow along. And the book closed. So what would be an example from the book that fits these descriptions here? He played piano whenever he could. All right, play piano whenever he could. So always play piano. So that really fits with enjoys piano, right? That's our maybe our inference, our evidence there. What about patience, perseverance, determination, being determined? Marcos? He's never give up on what he wants to do. Okay, didn't stop playing piano, right? Didn't give up playing piano. What else 
else, though? How else does he show that he's got perseverance and determination and stuff? There's one more, more fine detail in that story that we could really infer these type of things. Kylie? So it didn't give up playing piano, it didn't stop, it was always playing. So yeah, those really fit with what's going on here. But what else? There's one thing that they mentioned that kind of also brings out these attributes, or we can infer those attributes. Wesley? How he ran away and he um, tried to manage to play piano. Okay, constantly looking to, for people to play for. So constantly performing. Okay, what else? There's one little thing I'm really thinking about here. Marcos, do you know, do you remember that detail? So for patience, he was patient enough to like, well, I think fits with determined. There's one piece of evidence that really shows determination or perseverance. I'll give you a hint. Was Juan Garcia's family super well-to-do? Did he have like the greatest piano in the universe? No. Did he have the world-class tutor sitting there giving him piano lessons every day. What did he have that we can use to say, ah, he was determined and he was willing to persevere? Franken? Yes. The piano that he had played on its own. Okay, it played with the roll of paper. It read the music and it played on its own. So what did he do with that piano? He took the roll of paper out so that he could actually play it. So he didn't even have what we would consider a legitimate piano. So he had to actually take something that wasn't meant to be practiced on and turn it into that. Doesn't that kind of show some determination and perseverance to say, I want to play piano so badly I'm going to take something that's not meant to play piano and turn it into it so I can actually learn to play piano. I know a lot of people who would just say, well, I don't have a piano, so I'm not going to learn piano. The end. And they would never get to that point. But this person took the extra step, right? So we can get that as well. So it didn't have resources. So as you can see, just from those two pages, we were able to draw up a lot of evidence and infer a lot of things about Juan Garcia, just from two pages. So as you're reading, remember we talked about early in the year, reading is thinking. So as you are reading, you're connecting what is being read to your own life. You're making inferences about the people that are being mentioned in the story. You're looking at evidence to come up with those thoughts from the story. There's a lot going on when you read, right? You can see that right on the board just right here. And this is only a topic about character traits. We aren't even talking about setting. We aren't talking about all those things. Okay. So today, if you can, look through a biography and think about the fact that the biographer includes and what the facts show about the subject. So again, just like we did with Juan Garcia, what kind of evidence, so like for example, you guys are looking at explorers and social studies. 
maybe some of those explorers, what kind of evidence shows certain things about them? Were they patient? Were they adventurous? How do you know that? What kind of evidence can you use to prove that? Or did they persevere? You could say Christopher Columbus persevered. He was rejected multiple times by multiple kings until finally the Spanish king decided, you know what, I'll give you the shot. Maybe you'll find something worth my time. And he got a chance to go explore. So you can use that as inference too. So if you do, do that and write that down in your mini lesson response, okay? Let me turn this video off real quick.